Good morning and welcome to Church of the Lakes Online. Thank you for joining us this morning. We hope God speaks to you today through the teaching. To help you connect with Church of the Lakes, we have what we call an e-guide. If you go to our website at co2lakes.com, choose the three lines on the top right hand side, then click on what says e-guide. Thank you again for joining us this morning. Enjoy the teaching today and God wants to say something to you. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Church of the Lakes Online. I'm Pastor Mike. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, we're missing you live. If some of you, you might be sick or you might be traveling on vacation. If you are, we're jealous. Uh, but we do miss you this morning that you're not with us. Or maybe you're just checking us out for the first time, so you're doing that online. Welcome. We're glad you're here. And do want to remind you, uh, just like they've already told you, there's an e-guide. And so get on that, uh, whether it's on your tablet, your phone, uh, whatever, cotlakes.com, and then go to the guide. Um, and we've got everything here, really, that you might need to communicate, whether it be that you're a first-time guest, and uh, somebody's trying to call me, or <laughs> whether you're a first-time guest, and um, and there's you just want to let us know where you're, where you're from, or, or just some general information, there's a place for that. Events, uh, small group, sermon notes, you name it, it's all here. Let me give you a couple of announcements for our regulars that may be watching from home today. Uh, just want to remind you, about a week ago or so, I sent out an a end-of-the-year video about our giving for last year. If you didn't receive that and you'd like to see that, send us a message. Let us know uh, that you would like to receive that. We can send you the link very easily. Just kind of shows you where all of our missions money was given last year and all the uh, the people and the impact that it that it had. So it's, it's really kind of cool to watch that. Small groups, uh, we just launched all of our small groups. And again, that's on the e-guide, so check that out. Um, and also, most of our small groups are working off of the book that we've been talking about which is called Better Decisions, Fewer Regrets by Andy Stanley. We have copies of the book that are available to purchase. So if you're watching this here online, maybe you need to call Lizzie and come by here to the church office. And uh, if you need to purchase one, though, so, you, so that you have one to read, we've got them available for you. And then uh, very excited, we have hired a new team director. We're very, uh, really excited to welcome Gary Mershon onto our staff and a former youth of mine. So it's, it's kind of fun to, to watch him grow and, and uh, to move into this position. But uh, he will be opening back up our teen center on March the 7th. So we're very, very excited about that. In preparation for that, February 27th and March 1st. And again, this is all on here. You can find it uh, there in the e-guide. But March 27, uh, February 27th and March 1st, those two days we're doing training for those who would like to participate in our teen center. So if you want to get plugged in that way, check it out there, the information, register so that we know you're coming to one of the other of the training days. And then we have been uh, collecting change and dollars and money and checks, whatever God leads you to do for the pregnancy care center over at the Christian care center. And uh, we've got our baby bottles. Um, and so you may have seen those, maybe you hadn't, but um, we've got baby bottles out there, little banks for people to put money in. Those are due on March the 6th. So just want to remind everybody uh, to make sure that you bring the baby bottles back by March the 6th. You can bring them now, uh, but they're due definitely by March the 6th. All right, we are in a series that we have called Me Monster, Me Monster. and. To simplify, we're, we're really talking about, if I just put it in one word, selfishness, right? Just there is, there is something inside every single one of us. We all battle this. 
that says me, 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 right? That, that I want things the way I want them. Uh, there, there's, this, there's this part that it's all about me and my desires and my comforts and my wants. And, and the me monster, that part of us, um, it, it, well, it, it's, it's the part that makes us feel like life is all about us, right? And, and it really shows up in a specific area that we want to talk about today. And that's in the area of money and stuff. Come on, somebody. We like stuff, right? That's why um, at Christmas time, maybe your living room looks like Toys R Us threw up in your living room because we like stuff, right? In the, in the way that we do things. And we all have been given resources of some sort. Um, whether you have a house, a car, a job, uh, you've got money in the bank, you, you've got things that you own. And God has given us those resources, but I think he's given them to us that we would grow and use them to test us um, that, that we would either see how we use them, whether we use them for ourselves or maybe for the benefit of others. So let me say it this way, because I, I was looking at this verse and boy, this verse really sets it up today. As we consider this concept of me monster, something inside of me that's all about me, as opposed to the resources we have and what are they for? And there's this tension that we have of selfishness in us when it comes to things. Look at this verse in 1 Timothy 6 and 9. People who want to get rich. Now, let me rephrase that a little bit because I would also say it this way. People who have begun to think incorrectly about money. People who begin to, to get this kind of idea of resources and stuff a little bit twisted. We've been getting to think the way we shouldn't have because because we want, want, want. Well, what happens? They fall into temptation and a trap. They, they get trapped and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. And many of us, maybe you would say financially, you're kind of at that place uh, where you've gotten to a place where you've gotten your back against the wall and credit card debt and you know all these kind of things. And that's exactly what happens, that when we have bad thinking about money, resources, or what God intended for it, or when we let the me monster take over, then we can find ourselves in that place. Look at the rest of the verse. For the love of money, uh, right? Not money, but the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, right? So, so that's what we want to dive in a little bit today, that, that me monster thing inside of us. And it says this, some people eager for money have wandered from the faith. Boy, as a pastor, that, that bothers me, right? That people would actually wander away from the faith and pierce themselves with many griefs. So that kind of sets the stage as we talk about uh, this idea of me monster and stuff, and, and how does that relate, and how do we make sure that that's godly and under control inside of us? So let me ask this question. How many of you are savers? Are you the saver? Um, um, how many of you are spenders? Are you the spender? Now, here's what we'll see is if, if you're a husband and wife there or a couple of some sort there and you're watching this together, most likely one of you is the saver and one of you is, is the spender because opposites attract. God does that, I think, to maybe have us balance out, right? But here's what I would say to you, and maybe you've never thought about this way. You can be greedy in either direction. I want you to stop thinking that through because obviously the one who wants to spend, you look at that and you go greedy cat because they want stuff. But here's what I would also say. The one who wants to save what they want, what they're greedy about is security, right? Is that I think I can provide my own security. That's a me monster within itself. When the scripture is very clear that we're supposed to have our security in Christ, we're supposed to trust God, right? So, so both sides of that, as a matter of fact, Luke 12 and 13, four, it says for where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. In other words, your heart, your focus will follow what you do with your stuff. And, and, and so I have loved for years now as a pastor, I have loved sitting down with people and helping them with budgeting. It's a weird thing that I really like. It's, it's a real weird thing that I've just always thought was cool laying out a budget and doing percentages and figuring out the margin and all that sort of stuff. And when you do that, when you do budgeting and, and, and when you consider the way you're spending and all this, it's all about numbers, right? It's just, it's just numbers. It's just two plus two equals four. It, it's all about the numbers. And really there's kind of five areas that most of the time, if you sit down with somebody that you're going to talk about, if you talk about the numbers, um, first is income. All right, well, let's talk about what you're making. You got to make money, right? Or you're going to have to get an extra job like you've got to talk about 
getting some income to come in. That's obvious. That's an obvious number. The second one would be, well, now how are you going to spend it? Right. And this is where a budget comes into place. Uh, how, how do we lay that out? Where are we spending it? Do I stop all the time at convenience stores and buy energy drinks? And I don't even realize how many hundreds of dollars I had a guy years ago uh, come to me and say, Pastor, man, I'm just I'm dying financially. And I said, OK, well, let's sit down. So we sit down and we start crunching the numbers. What we figured out now, this is a long time ago, but still what we figured out was is he made twenty four thousand a year. But one habit he told me about was he stopped every morning and got. Uh, a pack of cigarettes and two energy drinks every morning at the convenience store. So we took the cost of that times five, right? During, uh, during the work week and we multiplied it out over the year. So here's what I said to him. I said, do you have any clue how much you're spending every time you do that? And he goes, no, not really. I said, well, let me put it in perspective. You make 24,000 a year. You spend 4,000 a year on cigarettes and energy drinks. Right. And so we've got to consider our, but that's just numbers, right? There's again, those are, those are just numbers that are the facts, black and white. The next thing you're going to talk about after you talk about income and spending is saving, right? Is okay. Well, we need to put some away. We need to save beyond saving. Then you're going to talk about maybe investing. Now, now I want not just to have the money. I want my money to work for me. I want my money to make money, um, in that whole process. And then eventually talk about giving. So these are kind of the, I think, what would be the basic five things. If anybody was going to help you budget, here's the numbers, right? These are the numbers. These are the things that you need to look at if you're going to deal with stuff well. But here's what I'd like to suggest. There's something beyond the numbers, right? There are principles that are the why behind doing the, you should be doing the numbers well. Let me say it to you this way, just doing the numbers with no good reason for doing the numbers will get old and we don't follow through, right? If we don't have any reason why we're doing this other than we're just, I don't know, we're trying to save or we're trying to do, but there's not a motivation. We need something beyond the numbers. And that's what I want to talk about today. Beyond the numbers. If we're going to deal with the me monster, it's not just about sitting down and setting up a budget. It's about changing a mindset. It's, it's something more. It's principles that are, that are more. Let me, let me show you what I mean with a verse in, in Haggai verse, uh, chapter 1. It says, now this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. All right? In other words, hey, like, let's, let's think this through a little bit. Let's think about principle and why we're doing what we're doing. Look at what it says. You have planted much, but have harvested little. You eat, but you never have enough. You drink, but you never have your fill. You put on clothes, but you're not warm. This is this one right here. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. Some of y'all are like, yeah, I know what that feels like. That's like my life first, right? Um, and, but, but listen to what it says. And what the Lord Almighty would say is, give careful thought to your ways. In other words, there are principles that are bigger than just the natural principles or the numbers that we talked about. There, there, are, there are some things beyond just the numbers. When, when all we do is crunch numbers, the me monster, hear this, has an opportunity to get involved in our decision making, right? So 1 Corinthians 1 and 20 says this, where is the wise man? Where is the scholar? Where is the philosopher of this age? Check this out. Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? God says this to us. My ways are higher like you've got these numbers and you've got these practical, natural ways, but there are some things that are more important. There are some things beyond the numbers, right? So there are some principles that, that, that will help me overcome the me monster when it comes to stuff and money. And, and, and I want to look at these five areas. We looked at five areas, right? We, we looked at the incomes and spending and, and, and in giving and investing and, 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 and all those. Well, let's walk through those real quick and let's talk about what's beyond just the numbers. So first of all, area was, was income. So beyond the, eye of, beyond the idea of income is this. Number one is calling versus compensation. Calling versus compensation. Instead of chasing a dollar figure, it's about chasing the will of God, right? The secret to this life, catch this, is discovering why you're here. The secret is, is discovering why you're here. It's not about how much stuff you can accumulate. It's about how much of God's design for you that you can fulfill. 
right? That's what we do every week with our Life Steps program is for you to come and figure out what are you just, what, what are you purposed to do? What is your design? And what personality did God give you? And how does that fit in to his greater calling on your life? Let me say it to you this way. We don't just need money to live on. We need something to live for. We don't just need money to live on. We need something to live for. Four, the me monster comes because we start comparing to everyone else and trying to live a lifestyle that we see other people living instead of living what we are called to live. Some people are supposed to have a lot of money and invest it into what God's called them to do. Some people are not. We have different lanes and different reasons for what we are called to do. The me monster says, how much can I accumulate? But God wants us to focus on our lives and our money around what we are living for, why we are here, what he has designed us to do. Look at Acts 20 and 24. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. If only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. And for this one, this was, it says the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace which is what we're also called to do. So, so beyond income, beyond compensation is calling. I promise you, if you find something you're called to do and you take a lesser paycheck than this other job, you're going to find way for way more fulfillment in that scenario. Those of us who just punch a clock and punch a clock and punch a clock, it gets really, really old. But when we understand, like, is this where I'm supposed to, am I called to this place? Am I called to this business? Do I have a purpose and a reason for being in this particular place? Fulfillment comes. All right, so we talked about income. Now let's talk about your spending. And, 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 and the numbers, we talk about spending. But, but I want to say it to you this way. It's contentment versus consumerism. Contentment versus consumerism. We live in a culture that just wants more, right? Just, we constantly want more. I want more. Um, Remember the credit card commercial? I want want it all and I want it now, right? Cool, you can have that. Here's your credit card. Just put it right in here, right? Why do we think that way? Well, we've lost the value of something called contentment. And it is the only place where real peace comes. Let me, let me show you Luke 12 and 15. Don't always be wishing for what you don't have for real life and real living are not related to how rich we are. Boy, that's radically different from really most of the messaging that we get, right? Most of what you see on the TV today in commercials will use these words. Well, you deserve it, right? And that's just feeding the me monster inside of us. I mean, hear that messaging as just feeding the me monster. Yeah, I deserve it. Me, 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 give me, give me, give me. Philippians 4 and 12. I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in, in want. Well, that leaves a question is, well, what's the secret? I think the secret is gratitude and the realization that you're blessed. Gratitude and the realization that you're blessed. If God did nothing else for me, I have more than 90% of the rest of the world right now where I sit. I live more comfortably than 90% of the rest of the world. If, If God did nothing for me at all except that Jesus came and died for me, then I get eternity. And even if I suffer on this earth for 80 years, 80 years compared to eternity is nothing, right? There's, there's, there's a gratitude, a realization. Let me say it to you this way. Contentment is not the fulfillment of what you want. It's the realization of what you already have. So read it one more time. Contentment is not the fulfillment of what you want. It is the realization of what you already have. All right, let's, let's move on to number three. So the numbers say that, you know, uh, save and, and, and we're supposed to save and, and we get taught to save, but there's a danger to saving. And the danger is this, is that you can set yourself up to where you are, where your security comes from. I have taken control. I have security. So beyond the numbers 
of just, hey, we're going to save in our budget is this. God dependence versus independence. Say it this way. Don't, don't build a savings account trying to insulate yourself from all possibilities. Like that's our thought process. If I can just have, if I had $4 million, then, then anything that happened, I could take care of it. Listen to the me monster speaking there, right? I have control. I have, I, and, and my security is in the wrong place. We use this term called being financially secure or financially independent is a, is a term that we use. And I want you to hear something. We were never, we were never designed to be independent of God. We are designed to be dependent upon him. So save and be a wise manager, but your security has to be in God alone. Look at Proverbs 18 and 11. The wealth of the rich is their fortified city. In other words, you know, rich people that, yeah, they think I got it all and I've got it all in control. They imagine, look at that word. That's interesting. They imagine it a wall too high to scale, right? We need to live life in trust of who God is. A life that is not secured by a bank account or an annuity or whatever investment we've made. Look at Proverbs 38 and 9. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Does that sound familiar? Um, that's in Jesus' prayer when he's teaching us how to pray. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, who is the Lord? In other words, when I have so much, I don't need him anymore. Right? I, don't, I don't put my security in him because I'm comfortable. I have it all under control. Or I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of God. So, so, so I would say it to you this way. I will not trust in riches, but in who richly provides. I will not trust in riches, but in who richly provides. Beyond the numbers, um, it's important. right? It, it's important that we consider, yes, income, you know, yes, the, the reality of how we spend, yes, saving, but what's the heart about what's beyond those numbers? All right. Our, our next on the list was, is, is, is this, and, and all of this is about really being a good steward, right? Number four is stewardship versus ownership, stewardship versus ownership. In other words, I use money not to make what I have grow, but with the true owner's heart in mind. See, a steward manages something that belongs to someone else according to that person's priorities. If you're a steward, if you've been given something and it's someone else's and you know it's someone else's, it's like one of those things like if you borrowed a shovel from your neighbor and your kid picks up the shovel and starts banging it on the concrete, you're going to go, whoa, whoa, I don't want to have to buy him another. But if it's your shovel, you may not react quite the same. See, there's a heart shift, a mind shift that happens inside of us when we go from owner, this is mine, to understanding everything belongs to God. And we've been given it that we might be stewards, right? God owns everything and I'm his manager. All that I have is just a temporary resource to be stewarded for God's purposes. Matthew 6 and 19 says it this way. Do not store up treasures for yourself on earth where malls and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where malls and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. What, what, what does this say? It says you can't take it with you, right? There ain't no U-Haul behind the hearse. I'm sure you've heard that before, right? But listen to me, but you can send it ahead of you. That's what that verse says. A verse says, yeah, you can't take it with you, but you can sit it ahead of you. In other words, what you do with the resources here will store up treasure for you in heaven. Matthew 13, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in joy went and sold all he had and bought that field, right? In other words, his priority became completely different because he was now looking at the eternal is, is the message that, that the scripture is trying to give us there. And so when we get to a point where we understand everything I have from my car to my house, to these clothes, everything I have, this is a stewardship journey, not an ownership journey. Well, now the numbers, well, there's something beyond the numbers. 
right? There's something more. As a matter of fact, there's a whole teaching, a whole parable about one getting 10 and one getting five and one getting one. And they all go and they invest, right? That's, that's what they do. They come back except for the one. And the ones that invested, the, the manager says, great job. And the other one, he takes it and gives it to those who invest. And that's what God says to us. I've given you resources and I've given you these things. And, and, and I'm, I'm actually expecting you to use them in a way that is honoring to me and builds up my kingdom. Stewardship versus ownership, right? According to the numbers, we're, we're to give. That's the last one in our, in our ones that we looked at. But there's a high principle to this, and it's this. It's generosity versus misery, right? Generosity versus misery. The, the, the opposite of being generous is being a miser, which is exactly where you get the idea of misery from. from. And, and the idea that we're supposed to be generous, right? Look at Acts 20 and 35. The Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Blessed to give, what does that mean? It means you're going to get actually more out of it right? Blessed to give. You're, you're blessed. You, you're going to get a blessing out of that. You, you know, you've given something to somebody and it just made you feel so good that they loved it, appreciated it and all that is more blessed to give. So there's a generosity that we've got to consider. First Timothy six, command them to do good. Okay. Now let me set this up because this is a, what is called a pastoral epistle. So it's a letter, epistles, a letter, fancy name for that. Paul writes this and he writes it to Timothy. Timothy's a young pastor. So he writes to the pastor and says, Timothy, tell your people this. So this would be like a letter written to me as the pastor that I would turn around and say, hey, here's what Paul said for us to do. It says, command them to do good to be rich in good deeds, to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasures for themselves as firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. There's a life that you're meant to live here, a life that's beyond the numbers, right? We can set up a budget. We can crunch numbers. We can do, but these are principles for us to live by, right? As a church, we have given away $768,945.41. My administrator gave that to me this week as a number. That's a crazy number. A half a million of that locally here, right in our area. Why? Why would we do that? Well, because of this idea right here. The value of my life is not determined by how much I accumulate, but by how much I give away. Right? It's, not, it's not how much I can gather. It's not how much I've got. It's not how big my bank account is. It's how much I can serve others. As follower of Jesus, that's what Jesus did. He gave his entire life up for others, for us. He sacrificed himself for us. 1 Timothy 6 and 18, command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds and be generous and willing to share. Right? That, that Just that concept is something that we've got to consider in our mind and, and understand. And, and it goes on in this way, they'll lay up treasures, right? We, we just read this, a foundation that is, this concept, this is beyond the numbers. So, so when we talk about the me monster, the, the thing inside of us that wants, because we all want, come on, we do it. We get on Amazon and, oh, that looks good. And I'm gonna order that. And these days, man, you can order something, have it show up right at your front door. Um, and it's just quick, 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 right? Um, I went to I went to a mall that I grew up in Tallahassee and I went to Tallahassee this week and I went to an old mall that used to be the most awesome mall uh, that was brand new when I was a kid and all and it was just desolate like there was there's nobody there anymore because of, of what we've gone you know with Amazon but I looked at it and I and as I was walking through the mall because I was looking for some uh, for some shoes and uh, I'm walking through the mall and I'm thinking you know this is kind of what happens with greed eventually it looks empty. Eventually it comes to a place of just kind of emptiness in, in that whole process. So let me encourage you when it comes to money or your stuff, hey, do the numbers, right? Income, spending, saving, investing, giving, like do the numbers, right? Work, work on your income, limit your spending, save, invest, give. But there's something that there, there are some principles that are beyond the numbers that are about heart, that are about our mind, about us focusing in such a way that we do things in a way that honor God, right? Calling versus compensation. Calling 
versus compensation. What am I called to do? Contentment versus consumerism. Sometimes it's good for us to tell ourselves no, right? Like, you know what? Appreciate what you have today. So somebody told me one time, you know, uh, a, a lot of times young kids will be excited about going and buying their first new car. So they'll spend all this money. So now you've got a $400 car payment. Okay. So you got this $400 car payment. Now listen to this young people and hear me on this. All right. If you're in your early twenties and you take $400 a month and you invest it, Okay, and somebody did the numbers. If you invested in something and it doesn't have to give a good return, by the time you are 60, you'll have $5 million. So I really hope you enjoy that car. <laughs> you follow what I mean? Like understanding that, that man, we, we've got to limit ourselves and say, you know what? It's all right for me to drive this car for a little while, right? And, and be content and learn, learn to do without what this world is trying to get us to chase after. God dependence versus independence. Um, work hard, be wise, but understand your, your dependence is upon God and God alone. At any one moment, this world will take us off, take out, take us out at the knees, right? The rug comes out from under us and life changes. Make sure while you're working hard to be smart financially, that it's not just your, for your own financial independence, um, because we've got to maintain God dependent stewardship versus ownership your steward everything you have is his are we stewarding in that way and generosity versus misery let me pray for you today and 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 i'm really hoping that maybe the holy spirit touched a particular area for you for you to consider and 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 to work on your 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 heart because you can sit down and do the numbers and you need to sit down and do the numbers and you need a budget and all of those things are health healthy but you've got to do the the heart work beyond the numbers um to make sure that we're doing it in a way that actually honors God. So let me pray for you today. Father, thank you for this teaching, this time that we had today. Um, Holy Spirit, guide us. What, what is it that we need to look at differently or do just a little bit differently? What is a next step for us in the process of honoring you with our stuff and, 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 and dealing with the me monster that wants and wants and wants? And so God, give us strength now to do whatever it is you've put your finger on today and the, and the courage to maybe do something different um, or do away with something or say no to something. So we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for watching. You guys have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday.